Nathan the Cox here. Guys, I got the Fluid Master 400A fill valve here with me, and we're actually going to do an actual installment video. Now, I've got an older video here where I talk about it and I explain a couple of tricks on it, um, but I'm actually going to show you guys how to install it. Of course, you're going to play with your puppy a little bit here. They always are going to do that during the video. They'll sit calm the whole time, start the video, they get up and want attention. Okay, enough with Molly here. Let's get back to the fill valve, all right? So this is going to replace um, at least any kind of standard American toilet uh, that I know of with many uh, other North American and possibly other European models. Uh, very, very popular model right here. One of my personal favorites, and I'll show you why as we get into this. So let's get to the unboxing here. Real simple box. Now, I do have an upgraded version of this that has like, um, I call it like, like a leak guard or a you know some other things like this. I really prefer just the basic 400A. I don't like the other ones. All right, it's not too much. I feel like the extra add-ons take away from the uh, just the way it works, the mechanical advantages that this has. So they overcomplicate it basically. So let's rip this puppy open. All right, yank her out. There we go. Empty box and some instructions right here. Now since I'm showing you guys how to do it. We'll put the instructions away. But it's really not bad to go ahead and look at yourself, just for reference. Okay, you got a little bag of parts right here. Let's open this up. All right, so what are these things? All right, bag over here on the side. So we have the nut, obviously, that goes on the bottom here, uh, the bottom of your, of your pipe, your post, whatever you want to call it. Here is the washer that goes there. This here attaches to the hose, uh, which fills into the overflow tube. In your toilet, which I'll show you exactly where that goes right there. But you can go ahead and stick the hose on there right now if you want to. Um, that's real simple. Uh, back to the fill valve here. You know, here is this is the floater part of the fill valve, which replaces the big ball caulk arm. You know, the big metal arm with the big ball at the end. All right, so this little floor right here replaces that. This right here, obviously, is where the hose goes right there. This is an adjustable, threaded, and it does have a Phillips head right up top here. Yep, still does. Uh, sometimes they change stuff. Looks like you can do a Phillips head or a large, uh, straight, you know, flathead. Uh, but that helps adjust it to fine tune it when we get into place. Now to do the the course adjustment, there is a locking ring right here, which you're going to pop. Okay, and that way it allows you to, well, you kind of like unscrew this. All right, it's really not wanting to twist up here for me. Anyways, hold on. There we go. It takes a little bit of an oomph on the brand new ones because they kind of stick a little bit. But there you go. All right, now that's a trick right there. You do want to yank this off. I didn't just break it. All right, so you can put it right back on there. And so when you stick it in there to adjustment, you pull the ring up and you can kind of click, 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 right? And there's a stop there. You can feel it now, now that she's moving. Uh, but you can yank it right off of there. And that, like I said, not breaking it. This is a special trick, which I really like these. Because once you have this installed, if this gets clogged up with hard water uh, deposits or decides to fail, you can yank that off, grab another one, stick it on the post, which is already there, and you're in and out in five minutes or less. Okay? So let's get back here to the post. We need the washer. We'll go ahead and prep that right now. Slide it on there. And just so we don't lose it, I'm just going to spin the nut on there right there. Okay? So, all right, the valve, the post, and our little tube in the clip. Tools you're going to need to do this. Um, now it is good to have some paper towels or old towel or something like that because you're going to get some water on the ground. So of course have that like, <coughs> excuse me, laying around. A bucket is nice to have. Okay, because there's going to be water coming out of the tank of the toilet and we're going to try to catch as much of that as we can and not go on the floor. On top of that, I do like using a big sponge. This happens to be a tile grout sponge. You can use a car washing sponge for this. Uh, this is just for transferring water. You'll see here in a minute while we're using that. Nice little trick right there. Slip joint pliers. I, of course, approve. Um, approve. Uh, my favorite are the channel locks. I just find they're really good quality. But if you have, there's lots of other you know, ones that are good out there too. That's just my personal preference. And if you're going to take off the supply line, I mean, like all the way off and replace it, you're going to need a little crescent wrench too. Um, I'm going to try to release my supply line because I don't think it's that old. Um, but I'll try to make another video anyways, showing you how to do that. 
So let's get to the bathroom and get this thing started here because I'm just talking too much. All right, here we are in the bathroom, sitting right over the toilet, and uh, oh, here's Molly. She's always got to come and see what's up. Okay, so I'm gonna do the very best I can. I'm even gonna give you guys some picture in picture with a second camera so you can see what's going on down at the bottom of the toilet. Uh, this is a very hard new to do because it's a very, very tight space. And you can see, obviously, my camera's almost on the ceiling here so you guys can see down what we got. So, what do we have? We have an old, crusty ball cock. This is the old ball cocks, uh, silk cocks, no, ball cock. Sorry, silk cock is the outside faucet. Um, you know, the old ball here, super rusty pole. Um, a lot of times that you can hear this thing after it's done flushing that it's still letting some water through because it's just not shutting off right. So let's get rid of it. First thing to do is to shut the water off. Make sure you have a good shut off down here. Um, if you can't shut the water off to your toilet all the way, you're going to need to go find the shut off for the whole house, whether it's uh, in the heater closet, underneath, at the street. Uh, but you need to get the water shut off because we're going to be opening up a water line here. So, oh, and one other tip is if you have plastic pipes. Now, if you've got copper or uh, your galvanized steel water pipes, um, go ahead and just, you know, shut the valve off and hopefully it shuts right off. But if you have plastic pipes, say CPVC, PVC, um, you've got to be careful with it. I, I actually would recommend using one hand to hold the shut off valve, another one to turn it so that you don't crank too hard and, and damage any of the joints. Okay, just a quick tip. Okay, so that should be done. You'll know it's done if you can push this down. Okay, we're good and quiet. There's no noise coming out of this. So there's no more water. So now we gotta get the water out of the tank. Uh, first, let's just get this out of the way. Okay. Oh, that didn't help much. There we go. Yuck. All right. All right, now we can reach down in here. Let's just grab the flapper rather than holding the, the flush valve or the flush lever, you know, down. Let's just get the flush, oh, uh, sorry. Let's just get the flapper out of the way, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna unhook that. And just set that to the side. Now, most of the water's out, but as you can see, there's definitely still, you know, three quarters of an inch, almost an inch of water sitting there because there is the, you know, the lip and everything where the flapper goes, so that that's still there in the way. And you want to kind of get rid of that so you don't make a big mess all over. <coughs> okay. So we're going to use this bucket more than once. We've got the bucket here and the sponge. And that's what the sponge is for. And, and don't, this is clean water, guys. This is fresh water. The same water comes out of your faucet. So unless you pull this lid up and pee into it, I, I hope you don't. <laughs> this is this water is really clean. It's clean. Okay. Now you might end up getting some black on your sponge, but that's probably coming from the rubber seal that's around the flapper. It's not. Uh, it's not gonna be anything. Shouldn't be anything nasty. Okay. So we're just gonna put it in there, and we're just gonna bail this water out the best that we can. Oh, oh Molly heard water. That's right. She loves this stuff. All right, don't spend like all day trying to get that dry. But there we go. Now we've got almost every drop of water out of there. Okay, so now we're gonna need um, to get your towel or paper towels to get it set kind of around the base because we're gonna we're gonna take the stem of this off and there's gonna be a little bit more water that comes out. So let's empty off, empty out the bucket and get some towels. Okay, you can see here I got the bucket down here, right next to you know where the fill up the supply line is connects up into the, the tank of the toilet and I've got the bucket here with the towel so we really should be able to just do this by hand and unscrew it now I'm not going to take it off with a shut off valve like I said I'm planning on reusing this one Oops. Uh, and that's why we're supposed to try to catch that I thought it was a little bit closer that's why we have a towel sitting underneath there help catch this when you make a mess All right. 
Now you are going to need to get a rinse on that nut. The dog's going to move. I can get my rinse. Now this is upside down. So just try to remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. Get your pliers adjusted to the nut. Let's loosen her up. Try to get loosened up enough so we can spin it by hand. Not a lot of room in here. Now go ahead and kind of push down on the uh, the fill valve, the ball cock, whatever you want to call it, to keep a little bit of water that's around there in the tank still while you're getting the nut off. Now that nut's off and out of the way, make sure your bucket's underneath there and lift her up. Okay, not much water left. We did a pretty good job of getting rid of that. Okay, so let's get rid of this, this side. Kind of crusty and rusty. All right, so now, like we did previously, we've already separated the stem from the fill valve. Spin the nut off, so you have that in one hand. Should already have the washer on there. And we're just going to put her in place and then put the nut on. From this point on, it should be pretty painless. Now, this has wings on it, so you should be able to do this almost all by hand. Try to get it in there pretty snug. You want to be able to take the stem and see if you can turn it. All right, well, just a little bit more snug. There we go. For those of you who don't have strong hand strength, putting your pliers on it and turning it just a little bit, like say hand, uh, hand snug and another quarter turn is acceptable. But these are plastic threads, so you don't want to like over, just torque them down and then crack them. All right, but you don't want to spin that. All right, so now the stem is in good and tight. Um, actually, before we do that, let's hook the supply line back up. Gonna find it down here. All right, here we go. Again, most of these supply lines have wings on them and are designed to be hand tightened. Like I said, if you have weak hand strength, it's okay to add a quarter turn with a wrench, but you don't want to go too far or you will crack it. They are, do all have rubber seals, so they should seal up real good, especially these new flexible lines that you see I've got here. Now, almost there. The fill valve. Now, now let's pay attention to something here in the toilet. You should somewhere have a fill line that's stamped in the toilet. Um, and I'm not seeing it in this one here. Um, there's generally a line that's marked in here. It's like stamped in the into the ceramic. It says fill line. Um, but you can see where the water used to come up to. And you can see this white tube here is your overflow tube. So we're going to want to bring the water up to nearly the very top of that. You know. Just maybe shy by a half an inch at most. So not by much. You really do want to get as much water in the toilet as you can so it flushes properly. I know a lot of people want to save water. Um, but truthfully, you're going to save more water if you have a stronger flush and you don't have to flush multiple times. So do, do make this work. Don't try to like save water by cranking this down and trying to make a miniature flush because it just really is not going to do the job properly. Okay, so you kind of look at the floater here and take your best guess before we even hook it up and turn the water on uh, where she's going to stop. And then we'll adjust it. You want the floater to be just a little bit above the fill tube or the overflow tube. Alright, All right. there we go. And it has click, click points there. Then you're going to slide the locking ring down and you make sure that's all the way locked. Because if it's not, you turn the water on, this little guy here could very possibly shoot off and then you're just going to have running water inside the toilet. It's not going to stop, okay, until you shut the water back off. Okay, there we go. Now you're going to want this little tube right here, uh, the additional fill that goes into the overflow, uh, to be kind of pointing 
a, you know, straight out or, you know, somewhere away from the flapper because this kid can get caught in the flapper. And a lot of fill valves have, I'm sorry, overflow valves have this little ring right here. Um, it's where you, you know, the tube originally went into. But these ones here have this nice clip design and it helps to keep the, the valve from siphoning water through the tank after it's stopped. So go ahead and do use what it comes with it. So just stick it on in there. You should already have the clip on the hose. And we're just going to kind of turn it around. Make sure obviously the hose is going to squirt into the tube. So put it on the right way. Because this hose should be shooting right into the tube right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's going to be hard with this video and angle. Okay. And over here we're out of the way of the flapper. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you have an old flapper, this is the perfect time to put a new one on. But again, this one was put on just recently, or at least a little while back, and I, I did that during the video. Um, so we're going to reuse it, because there's nothing wrong with this one. Snap it on the post there. There we go. Make sure that's working properly. And that's lined up. Okay, almost done here. Now we're going to turn on the water, make sure the level is correct, and then make sure we have no leaks. Okay, so. Okay, now we're just gonna speed this up while it's filling. Okay, that was darn close. I hit that almost perfect right on. Um, I haven't put more than one of these in, so I'll kind of know where they sit. But you can see here, um, actually the water level is only like an eighth of an inch below the top of the overflow tube. So just in case something changes a little bit, what I'm going to do is here's your, your adjustable uh, you know, screw right here for the floater. I'm going to screw, make sure I go the right way. Let's see here, unscrew, yeah it makes it goes down. So if you unscrew it, or to the left, or counterclockwise, it will make the floater go down, which is going to then lower the, the tank level. Um, I just did that a little bit. Um, so we're good, we're good here, everything sounds good. Don't hear any water running. You're going to go underneath here and feel around. Make sure everything is dry. And we're good. So guys, thank you very much for watching this. Please share this video. A lot of people out there could really use to know how to do this. It is a simple, I wouldn't say too simple, it is a straightforward fix for your toilet um, and one that can be done with a little bit of instruction. So please subscribe to my channel, share this for other people, check out my website greatwineninja.com, lots of other great videos there. Thanks again.